Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Lisa, and today I'm whipping up a summer meal prep as these videos continue to be highly requested. Now, because it's summer and it's really hot outside, especially here in Southern California, I did my best to limit the amount of cooking in this meal prep. There's only two ingredients that require any cooking, and the rest of the items are light and fresh and really straightforward. So that means less time in your kitchen cooking and more time outside enjoying summer. So in today's video, I'll show you how to meal prep 10 ingredients and give you a few ideas for meals and recipes that you can make quickly throughout the week. I've also thrown in a little bonus dessert recipe for you today because when it's hot and it's summertime, I think we could all use a sweet frozen treat. Now, just as I did on the last meal prep video, I created a downloadable PDF guide of this summer meal prep so you don't have to worry about taking any notes at all throughout the video. I'll tell you how to download the PDF at the end of this video, but first, let me show you what I've meal prepped this week. As usual, we'll start with the item that takes the longest amount of time first, and for this meal prep, that's zucchini bread. So we'll grease a loaf pan with coconut oil and set our oven temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Zucchini bread is the perfect summertime bread as zucchini is in abundance and it's a great way to sneak more veggies into an otherwise very beige food item. Zucchini bread is also really moist and as you'll see later, can be used in both sweet and savory ways. Grate one and a half cups of zucchini, which is usually about one large zucchini. Then use a nut milk bag or kitchen towel to squeeze out any excess water from the zucchini. As a tip, I always use my nut milk bag inside out so that the seams are on the outside. This helps prevent food particles from getting stuck in those seams. So you'll just squeeze out all the water and then set the zucchini aside. To get started with our dry ingredients for this gluten-free, paleo-friendly zucchini bread, we'll add one and a half cups of almond flour, a half a cup of tapioca flour, and a quarter cup of coconut flour to a bowl. To that, we'll add one teaspoon of baking soda, a tablespoon of cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of salt, and then stir all of our dry ingredients together. In a separate bowl, we'll mix our wet ingredients, which includes three eggs, a half a cup of applesauce, two tablespoons of maple syrup, and a half a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Then we'll add our grated zucchini and give it a stir until everything is combined. Pour the wet ingredients into the dry and stir everything together until you've got a batter. Then pour that into your greased loaf pan and cook for 50 to 60 minutes or until the top is golden and a toothpick comes out clean. Hard-boiled eggs make for the perfect single ingredient snack, but for this meal prep, I've got a few new recipes up my sleeve. If you watched my video on how to make the perfect hard-boiled and soft-boiled eggs, I'm sure you're an expert at making these by now. But for those who haven't yet watched that video, we'll start by bringing a pot of water to a boil. Once the water is boiling, turn the heat off just for a second and use a skimmer to gently place the eggs in the hot water. Turn the heat back up to high and set a timer for 12 minutes. While the eggs are cooking, we can move on to our next item, which is to peel and slice several bananas. Line a plate or tray with parchment paper and grab yourself some popsicle sticks because we're gonna freeze the bananas and create a sweet treat in just a bit. Once your bananas are peeled, slice several of them in half and it's probably not wise to slice them in your hand as I'm doing. Once you have three or four bananas sliced in half, insert the popsicle sticks halfway into the bananas and place those in the freezer for at least two hours. For our remaining bananas, slice these into quarters and place them in a storage container or stasher bag as we'll use these for smoothies. I really love stasher bags for sliced bananas as the bananas lay in one flat layer and they don't stick to the bag as it's silicone, which makes getting them out far easier. If you'd like more information on stasher bags, make sure to watch my meal prep containers video. All right, your hard boiled egg should be almost done at this point, so prepare an ice water bath and then set that to the side. Once the 12 minutes is up, remove the eggs from the pot and let them fully cool in the ice water. Like zucchini, cucumber is a cooling, refreshing, and hydrating veggie during this summer. 
In my first meal prep video, I showed you how to pre-cut carrots and celery and store those in water. Well, good news, you can do the same thing with cucumber and snack on it throughout the week. So slice up one or two cucumbers and then add those slices to a glass jar. Fill your jar with cold filtered water, close the lid, and then place it in the fridge. If you have any leftover cucumber that doesn't fit in the jar, just cover the end tightly with plastic wrap and store this in the fridge as well. Another ingredient that just screams summertime is fresh strawberries. And since my local market had organic strawberries on sale two for one this week, I of course grabbed two. Strawberries are unfortunately at the very top of the dirty dozen list, which measures the amount of pesticide residue in produce. So washing is key. And studies have shown that conventional strawberries oftentimes have residue of more than 10 different pesticides. Now, I should also clarify that organic strawberries are not pesticide free. In fact, organic produce still contain pesticides, just not the synthetic pesticides found on conventional strawberries. So think of organic as simply containing less pesticides and being non-GMO. To wash the strawberries and remove dirt, debris, and bacteria, add them to a bowl of water and let them soak for five minutes. Then drain them and store on a paper towel lined container with no lid for up to five days. And if you'd like to know why I no longer add vinegar to my water, I'll have more info on the full blog post. If you're gluten-free or looking for a lower carb alternative for sandwich bread and buns, it really doesn't get much better than fresh lettuce leaves. I'm using green leaf lettuce today, but you could also use red leaf lettuce, romaine lettuce, or several other varieties. We'll wash the lettuce similar to the strawberries, so fill a big bowl with water and remove each lettuce leaf from the stalk. Submerge it in the water, slosh it around to clean it, and let it sit for several minutes. If you have a salad spinner, use that to dry the leaves or blot the leaves dry with a kitchen or paper towel. I'm usually not a fan of single-use products like a salad spinner, but if you eat a lot of salads as I do, then it's definitely a very useful tool. Once the lettuce is dry, add the leaves to a paper towel lined storage container and place it in the fridge. At this point, our eggs should be fully cooled as well. You can keep them in their shell for up to a week in the fridge or you can peel them ahead of time and they'll last for up to three days in the fridge in a storage container. It's totally up to you based on your personal preference and what you plan to make throughout the week. Next on our list is bell pepper and I frequently add diced bell pepper to salads and egg scrambles during the summer. So slice the bell pepper in half and use your middle three fingers to easily remove the seeds. Then dice the bell pepper, add it to a storage container, and place it in the fridge. I haven't found any benefits with adding paper towel or water to the container with bell pepper, so I just add it straight to one of my glass lock storage containers. Meal prepping onions is one of my favorite things to do because it means I only have to cry one time rather than several times throughout the week. And boy, do I have sensitive eyes. I like to slice the red onion into thin half moon slices because that then gives me the option to keep them like this or quickly dice them into smaller pieces throughout the week. And that quick little dice is so fast that it never gets my waterworks flowing. Once the red onion is sliced, add it to a storage container and place it in the fridge. Now, hopefully you haven't forgotten about our zucchini bread because after we've sliced and diced all those veggies, it should be fully cooked so remove it from the oven and let it cool. Last on our meal prep list are two very flavorful dressings, and the first is a champagne vinaigrette. It comes together really easily and starts with finely dicing one small shallot. Add that to a bowl along with two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, the juice from one lemon, a teaspoon of honey, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. To that, we'll add one third cup of champagne vinegar and whisk it together. Then add one half cup of olive oil and whisk continuously while slowly pouring. You'd like to emulsify the dressing a bit, but odds are it will separate when you store it and that's fine. All you have to do is give it a good shake before using and I'd recommend placing it in a leak proof container like a weck jar or lay parfait jar with a silicone gasket. 
The name of this dressing is a big giveaway to one of the recipes we'll be making. We'll start by mincing two garlic cloves and adding one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, the juice from one lemon, a half a teaspoon of oregano, which is really the key spice in Greek salad dressing, a quarter teaspoon salt, a quarter teaspoon black pepper, and one third cup of red wine vinegar. Then whisk that together as we did previously and slowly pour in a half a cup of olive oil while continuously whisking. Pour that into a storage container and place it in the fridge. Our bananas should be quite frozen now after about two hours, so place them in a storage container that's lined with parchment paper, and if you stack them, just make sure you place parchment paper between the layers. All right, so now that you have these 10 ingredients prepped, let me give you a few ideas of what you can make in just a few minutes by combining them with ingredients in your fridge or pantry. For breakfast, you can whip up a very easy and fresh strawberry banana smoothie. There's only four ingredients in this smoothie and it can be made with dairy or dairy free. To start, remove the stems from the strawberries, cut them in half and measure out about two cups worth. Add those to your blender along with one frozen banana, which is four of our chunks, a half a cup of milk, and a half a cup of yogurt. Then blend it all together until it's creamy, and if you want to get fancy, you can add a little fresh strawberry garnish to the top. For another breakfast or snack, we're going to use our zucchini bread as the base. Of course, you could pop your zucchini bread in the toaster and add a pat of butter but I thought we'd get a little creative today with both a sweet and savory breakfast option. For a sweet option, spread a little yogurt on your zucchini bread and top that with some sliced strawberries. As usual, I have my homemade almond butter in the fridge, so I'm drizzling that on top, but honey would be a great option as well. For a little crunch, I'm adding cacao nibs, but chopped nuts or chia seeds would also be tasty. For a savory option, add several avocado slices and one of our hard-boiled eggs. Top that with chives or other herbs and a sprinkle of salt and pepper. As you can see, the toppings are really endless and whether you opt for sweet or savory, the good news is that you're already getting a boost of veggies in the bread. For a snack throughout the day, you can munch on your cucumber slices or use them to scoop up homemade hummus. But I also have another delicious idea for you, and that's smoked salmon, avocado, and cucumber bites. Remove a couple of cucumber slices from your jar, lay them on a plate, and make sure you've got some wild Alaskan smoked salmon. Smoked salmon is a great way to add a protein boost without any cooking, and it has that wonderful smoky summertime flavor to it. But first, we need to mash up half of an avocado. You could scoop this out into a bowl and mash it up with a squirt of lime juice, but I have a habit of mashing straight in the avocado skin if I'm just doing it for myself. Add a dollop of avocado to each cucumber and place a piece of smoked salmon on top. Chop up more fresh chives and sprinkle those along with a little bit of cracked black pepper. These bites are beyond tasty and will definitely tide over any hunger pangs throughout the day. For lunch or dinner, it's really easy to whip up a veggie-heavy Greek salad. If you still have cucumber slices left throughout the week, you can use those, but if you'd like to save those for snacking, it's really easy to slice up another cucumber as well. The full recipe for this Greek salad with proper measurements is on my website, but I'm just eyeballing a single portion for myself today. So I'll dice up half a cucumber and add that to a bowl and slice up a handful of grape tomatoes. I'll also slice up a small handful of pitted Kalamata olives and add those along with a portion of our pre-chopped bell pepper and red onion. Our last ingredient is feta cheese, which I love. And if you watched my zucchini fries recipe, you know that I always buy fresh blocks of cheese rather than pre-grated or pre-crumbled cheese as I'm not a fan of those anti-caking additives. 
Then all that's left to do is drizzle this salad with our homemade Greek salad dressing, give it a stir and enjoy. For another lunch or dinner idea, we're gonna spruce up a traditional egg salad recipe and turn it into an avocado egg salad. To do that, we'll take three of our hard boiled eggs, dice them up and add them to a bowl. Then we'll peel and remove the pit from one avocado, finally dice it and add that to the bowl as well. The avocado will become plenty mashed when we stir everything together, so there's no need to mash it before adding it to the bowl. Next, we'll take some of our red onion, and you could leave these in half moons if you like large pieces, or you can quickly dice it into smaller pieces as well. You can use a variety of herbs in this recipe, so feel free to use whatever you may have in your garden, but I'm adding chopped chives and fresh parsley from my patio. To that, we'll add two tablespoons of mayonnaise, and I'm using my homemade mayo, one teaspoon of lemon juice, and salt and pepper. Give it a quick stir and try not to over stir it. To serve the avocado egg salad, pile it on top of our pre-washed lettuce leaves and garnish it with microgreens. As you can see, I'm all about the salad recipes in the summertime. So for one more delicious salad, we're gonna make a smoked salmon, avocado, and arugula salad. Again, the full recipe for this is on my website, but to eyeball a single portion, I'll add a handful of arugula to a bowl, along with a small handful of microgreens. Then I'll tear up my smoked salmon into smaller pieces and add that, along with half of an avocado. To balance out the saltiness of the salmon and the creaminess of the avocado, we'll add a little natural sweetness with a sliced pear. Lastly, add a small handful of red onion and then sprinkle with salt and pepper. We'll top this salad with our champagne vinaigrette and if it has separated, just give it a good shake before adding a few teaspoonfuls. I think you're really gonna love the flavors in this salad and it's certainly been one of my favorites for the last several weeks. All right, I promised I'd have something sweet for you on this summer meal prep. So to finish things off today, we're gonna make chocolate covered bananas. If you'd like any toppings on your bananas like nuts, shredded coconut, or dried fruit, make sure to get those ready ahead of time. To get started, add about eight ounces of chocolate chips to a heat proof glass and melt the chocolate either on a double boiler or in 20 second increments in the microwave. Then take your frozen bananas and dip them in the chocolate. You can cover them all the way, though I found it's a little less messy to just cover them about 80% of the way. Let any excess chocolate drip off, and you'll notice that the chocolate will start to harden quite quickly on the frozen bananas, so be ready to sprinkle on your toppings. I've found that holding the banana while sprinkling the toppings allows the chocolate to harden around the banana. If you place the banana immediately on parchment paper and sprinkle without holding it, you'll find your chocolate spreading out flat. Today's toppings on these bananas includes shredded coconut, freeze-dried raspberries, chopped pistachios, cacao nibs, chopped hazelnuts, and almond butter. Chocolate-covered bananas are the best summertime treat, and you can pre-make them for the entire week as well. Just place them back in the freezer in the storage container once they're coated with your toppings. I hope you enjoyed all of those delicious recipes. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I created a downloadable PDF guide of this summer meal prep for you. It should hopefully make your life a little bit easier in the kitchen as it contains all of the food storage guidelines and links to all of the full recipes on my website, downshiftology.com. You can download this PDF guide in the video description box below, but if you're already on my list because you downloaded the spring meal prep guide, you don't have to do anything. You are automatically gonna receive this summer meal prep in an email from me today. One of the benefits of subscribing to my website is that you're always the first to know when new recipes and videos go live. If you like this video and would like to see more videos in this meal prep series, 
Make sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't yet watched my first meal prep video or my spring meal prep video, I will link those on the last screen. All right, that's it for me this week. I will see you guys again in the next video.